You know, I never expected this game to get so philosophical in the way that it has here today. It's... Once again, it goes to show just how creative the team is in the stories that they've told here. Taking this game from where it was 10 years ago and just completely lifting it to where it is now. The fact that they went here to deal with questions that often come about through works of science fiction like this. And there's as much science fiction as there is fantasy in this game. Don't get me wrong. But it's... It goes to show just how good this game is. And that this really is the best Final Fantasy game I've ever played. Better than 4, better than 13, and the rest of the 13 series. Of course, better than 15. And I'd even put it above 6 and 7. Because none of them have ever been able to make me feel so much emotion for these characters as this game has. It really goes to show just how powerful this game is and what an amazing team it has behind it. That said, let's continue on. Let's speak to Alphano. I get the feeling we're getting to the end very soon here. That crystalline path, Rahaz paved it for us. Difficult as it is, we must carry on. For our friends and all who await us in faith. So, come. Let us seek the past beginning. It appears to be near the outpost. And yeah, Rooks, absolutely no punches pulled in this. Look, Prince, a portal has opened. It will surely deliver us true. It must. Here is where the path begins, and it ascends to dizzying heights. Let us make our way, one sure step at a time. Our friends got us this far. Their courage, their strength, their wisdom, their love. We owe it to them to c continue, no matter how long it takes. Gotcha, Rooks. Alright, they are both accompanying us. Thancred would scout the road ahead, 
You stole an Orion Shea would trade opinions on esoteric subjects. Graha would join in their discussion, or else chat with me and Alice about the mission. Estinian would be at the rear, apart yet present. All the while, you would come and go. Wherever you are needed, and together, we would travel. All I can hear are my footfalls, my heartbeat. It's so much quieter now. But the fact we can breathe and continue on is proof that the others are still with us. They are. They are, aren't they? And I'm certainly holding out hope that even though they may not be part of future stories, that when this is all over, the crystal of them will restore them. The innumerable lights that shine in the distance. To think that they all could have birthed civilizations. To think that everything they built has gone to dust. Their people's lost to despair. Of the stars floating in this sea of midnight. Ours is a lonely aberration. And yet, no matter how many worlds have met their ends, with you and Alice by my side, there is nothing I fear. No ocean so vast I cannot cross. broken stars I see. Shattered, ruptured, unraveled. I wonder if they're also worlds recreated at their ends. The sight of them fills me with a sorrow I cannot describe, and a truth I cannot deny. Birth and death. Once we came and where we'll return. A wheel from which there is no escape. portal is barely visible from up here. Truly, we've come far. Much farther than would have been possible had we kept chasing perfect ideas, as we did in the past. Hey, Ozix. It is because we have known failure and frustration that we have learned and grown from them that Heidelin has entrusted us with this mission, with the fate of this very star. It's all a dream, isn't it? A long, elaborate dream. Any moment now, I'll wake up in my bed. Still a student, grandfather alive. I'd go about my day, relieved as the fragments of that other life fade away. And that would be happiness, wouldn't it? That none of it. No. No, I won't give up these experiences. Good and bad, they are mine. They are me. I still have plenty of legs left to me, don't you worry. It's you I'm worried about. You always push yourself so hard for us, for everyone. And while we're here, 
we'll make sure to bear our share of the burden. Rest assured, I am fine. Thank you for your concern. What of yourself? Though we can't afford to be too leisurely, neither need we rush unduly. We've crossed an impossible distance to stand where we are now. And we're but a few steps away from journey's end. It will be over before we know it. can't mount up here. They're not too far back. I think this was the next one I needed to hit up. There's some structures up ahead. Still a ways to go before we reach the dead sun. Given all this, I know how naive it must sound to hope it all works out somehow. Still, you'll forgive me if I wish for it all the same, and for you most of all. Not that you of all people need it. It's just... After all the help you've given me, for once I want to be the one to help you. Well, this is it. The end of the path, and the beginning of whatever awaits. There will be greater hardships. We may be made to feel powerless. It come what may, let us have no regrets. No, let us have pride in what we have to achieved what we have achieved and how it changed us for the better. That's worth fighting for and dying for as they did. This is almost... Normal. 
It's not unlike many cities we know, but it's deathly quiet. Mayhap the inhabitants are within the buildings, or invisible to our senses. Wrong on both counts. There's simply no one here. Meteon. This is how I found it when I arrived. Another star which once pulsed with life, but no longer. How it ended, I do not know. Invasion, sickness, suicide, no one can say. No one lived to speak for the dead. They are gone. Gone. Search all you like, but you'll only end up turning back. No one is here, then neither should there be an emotion to bar our way. Yet Meteon seems convinced we'll turn back. What brittle is this? Whatever Meteon may have said, we should confirm it with our own eyes. We need to have a look around. Indeed. At the very least, it doesn't appear to be a sprawling place like those before. If we split up, it shouldn't take too long to cover the area. There doesn't seem to be anyone here. Perhaps you could try calling out. Hello? If anyone has heard you, they do not respond. Were it not for the thick layer of dust, one could imagine someone drinking from these cups but moments ago. The object resembles a tree, and appears to have been fashioned from a stone-like material, erected in place of an actual tree, or to serve some other purpose, perhaps. Regardless, there is no one left to explain, to tell the story. This place is reminiscent of a bar but neither part patrons nor staff are anywhere to be seen. Egg-shaped containers line the shelves, with a, few, uh, with a loose few sitting on the counter, vessels for beverages in all likelihood. A venue bustling with activity until it was not. In the distance, you glimpse Alice picking her way through the ruins, but otherwise by no signs of life. If anyone can hear me, say something. Your call echoes faintly before being swallowed by the silence. If I had to guess... Though nobody's here, this may have to do something with the idea that 
there's nobody to remember who these people were. Nobody to pass on the knowledge. Similar to Emmett Selk, when he asked the Warrior of Light, remember that the Asians once existed, that the Yamaratines once existed. Though set slightly off the ground, this appears to be a door, while the objects to the left could be letter boxes. The door is rusted shut, and the film of dust all over suggests no one has come through in a long, long time. Prince, take a look at this. If the robe was a little longer, we could take it to just beneath the dead sun. But I suppose this is where the reconstruction ends. How about you? Did you find anything of interest? I see. I noticed the same things. Cups left upon tables, chairs out of place. I don't know what happened here. But I do know I don't want to be alone anymore. We've searched enough for now. Let's find Alpha No and compare what we've learned. would seem to get us the closest there. I wonder if uh, we're going to have to use the crystal of a Zem here. Would that mean sacrificing the others? Did you find anything? No. This place is completely deserted. And I can't see how we're supposed to move on from here. Neither can I. It's quite the quandary. There are no denizens to bar our path, yet there is no way forward. For another mystery, we did find signs of very recent life. You'd swear everyone just vanished into thin air. I wonder how many ruined worlds like this has Meteon seen. Ah. Uh, could it be? Yes. Yes, I believe I may have puzzled this out. Is it Meteon that we need to help? Despite how it appears, it's no different this time. There is someone here who has wished for this ruin. Yeah, Meteon herself. But if that be the case, what is the point of going up to the dead star? And I believe that together, Alizé and I can overcome their will. I promised your parents I'd keep you safe. I know. I know. 
But if there is a chance this will work, then I would take it. For everyone, and for myself. Can't we just sacrifice some of the Loprets? I will not pretend otherwise. I have my fears. And Brooks, yeah, the, the way that it went down originally definitely did seem to have that feeling that was just suddenly something was trying to enter her consciousness. So no, I agree with you like that. The, it definitely does seem like something happened. Not for myself, but for you. The last to remain. You are no stranger to carrying the burden of others. But I can only imagine how heavy the weight would be this time. As your friend, I cannot bear the thought of making you suffer so. Then why suggest such a thing? It's too much to ask of anyone. Even him. Why must he be the one? Why must he fight alone? More than a hero, he's a dear friend. Not only to us, but to so many others. There are so many people in the world who care for you, and yet... And yet... <laughs> Alizé, I have an idea. Given the nature of this realm, it may be possible to do more than unbar our friend's path. We might also pave him a new one. For instance, a path where he finds happiness at journey's end. This much, I think we can believe with the utmost conviction, no matter how deep our despair. So please, believe in us too. And press on. Thank you. What are you? If the plan's decided, then let's not dally. you are. It was as I said, was it not? It was. We couldn't find anyone. But this place isn't entirely deserted, is it? You are here. You sought out a star of promise and found a ruined husk. Like us, you explored the devastation. Like us, you were stricken. Horrified by the thought that so many lives could be snuffed out as if they were worth nothing. And the thought that you would have to bear the terrible tidings to Hermes. That which you saw and felt, you shared with your sisters. As did they share their own grim findings with you. Overcome by the pervasive despair of these stars, some of you inadvertently ushered their peoples to their ends. Knowing the horrors you know, anyone would feel the same. They would fear what lies ahead, 
and struggle to move forward. Fear? I had forgotten that such a thing existed. So focused have I been on shepherding despair. If you can remember, then you can still face and overcome your own fear. Why would I bother with such an insignificant emotion? If the despair I command is as a raging river, then fear is but a trickling stream. It can do nothing to alter my flow. You spoke with the Aya, yes? Heard their tale of what awaits the universe. It's true. The stars grow colder and more distant. Eventually, all will enjoy frozen solitude. Using the power of Dynamis, I'm hastening that process. In so doing, nothing will be born ever again. Everyone will remain dead. Alas, it will take time for that to happen. So in mercy, I sent you my gift. To spare you needless suffering. Don't worry. Even if no living witnesses remain to mark the event. I'll make certain that Atheris has a proper end. For all the power you wield, you're more fearful than the familiar you used to be. That Meteon feared simply to move forward, but your fear is such that you've given up on everything. Agreed. What's their plan of what to do after they've completed their mission? What are they going to do to pass the time and such? I know it well. That sense of defeat. I've tasted my fair share of it. But as many times as we've fallen down, we've learned how to pick ourselves up and carry on. We take each other's hand, share in each other's courage, follow in each other's footsteps, and turn sorrow into strength. There are times when we fail. We bear wounds that do not heal. But these experiences are part of life, and they make us stronger. We rise, fall, and rise again. Don't worry about us. You must take the next step, and all the rest after that. Now I'm alone. Earlier, in Old Charlian.
Cryo? Are you all right? Uh, it's nothing. Just a headache. <sighs> They'll be fine. I know they will. Apologies for the interruption. A man arrived on the last ferry, an associate of the Scions. He wishes to speak with you at once. Who could this be? In this city devoid of life, you sense the presence of another. The sorrow of a thousand, thousand worlds weighs heavy, and yet you can walk on. Chiffant. What we have sown in blood, we have reaped in suffering, and it cannot go on. Is that Membrita? Or is that... Thanks for pointing out the buff. And Walker, walking alone until journey's end, the burden weighing heavy. Upon the souls of they who have sacrificed themselves to pave the way for peace, we will never abandon our cause. Emmerich? Okay, so it's not just only dead people then. While it is true that man succumbs all too often to anger and avarice, he may yet overcome his baser instincts through the forming of bonds with others. Such victories are rarely won without sacrifice, but the prize is worth the price. Bravon. Are glad indeed to be able to welcome friends both old and new. What's her name? Uh, the, the ninja, the uh, uh, slip in my mind right now. You, Gary, yeah, thank you. Save your tears for the morrow. You may be sure we will have ample cause to shed them. Be they for joy or despair. That's he in. From tragedy and sacrifice, we rise to greet a new dawn. Thank you. I wasn't sure on that one. A 
a future shaped by the choices we made in ways we could never have foreseen. Is that Fort Hump? Yet miracles do happen, so let us pray and will our friends hope. Matoya, I think. I won't oh, stop big praying leg. until I know they're safe. That was Lise. Midgar Summer. <laughs> Look to the light within, that you may continue to serve as a beacon to others. Heidelin. Let's finish this. Estinian? Here, the path ends. There is no way to reach our nest. I told you. Resignation and acceptance reign in this place. The rejection of life by those who came to curse it. Those whose dreams were unfulfilled, whose prayers were unheard, whose labors were unrewarded. Hope cannot deliver you unto hopelessness. Our refuge is beyond you. Always has it been. Such is the nature of this place. You should have remained on a Theris. Struggle will avail you not, nor will it grant your comrades peace. Come, let me relieve you of your burden. You have suffered enough. Asm's magic. So long as our souls remain, you can use it to summon us back. But you mustn't. How do we make peace? With That's why it's too soon for this to end. You must triumph. Be safe, all of you, and come back. I am ever grateful. Where are those Lapras? Can they build me a ladder up there? All these years. Is this the answer I was hoping for? So long as we remember, our fates remain ours to shape. Perhaps when our time comes to return to the star, we shall remember these few days we have lost. Do not squander it, the legacy I leave you.
I'll reach you. I'll find a way. What are they doing here? Uh, I bid them remember, but all this time I'm the one who had forgotten. A right fool you've made of me, Hermes. And to add insult to injury, I've been denied a sound rest, forced to watch this clamorous show. When did... What? Oh, come now. It's been a gripping tale. Unbreakable bonds and noble sacrifice, sprinkled with moments of levity to counterbalance the pathos. It's got it all. I, for one, would have been perfectly content to watch enraptured from the stalls. Huh. But I won't say no to a bit part. What are you? Half-faded souls of the dead. Isn't it painfully obvious? Worry not. We haven't the power to defeat you, nor is it our duty to do so. Not anymore. That being said, we do have a score to settle. So here I am, Venar. I suppose you needed me to tie it all together, these frayed threads of our history. But knowing you, I suspect there's a joke in it too. Oh yes, I can imagine you gloating over my forgetfulness. Were I feeling charitable, I might assume you had left room for the possibility of this outcome. Even so, you'll get no applause from me. A single gesture will not lighten the burden I've had to bear. Still, you must be commended. Our methods would not have brought mankind this far. And so, as a show of respect to the last of us, I make this declaration. You will not end our journey. That is our answer. The answer of all lives of Atheris, past and present. As you've called us to the stage, so shall we perform. And creation magics never fail to please. Drawing upon the hopes of your comrades, we will make for you a new path. What form said path takes depends on you. So focus. Focus and envision that which rejects the claim that you cannot attain your goal. Ours is the wisdom to weave the fabric of reality. Ours is the power to create. Well, that looked like Final Fantasy VIII for a moment there. Meteon, though I gave you these wings to soar the heavens, I did not teach you how to walk the earth. 
So loath was I to bind another living being. In the course of your long journey, you will learn from those you meet. Learn to walk and run and so much more. A flower. Yes. Upon your return, I will gift you a beautiful flower. These Alpus blooms serve as proof that this realm is not utterly devoid of hope. No more can you deny its power. No more is yours the dominion of despair. In case the practical implications were lost on you, your comrades no longer need fight their fight. So go on. Call them back to your side. There they are. May you ever walk in the light. And her power is gone. Ugh. How disappointing. Not even a single scar in the making to brag about. <laughs> You'll find a way regardless. Honestly, this is far more than any of us could have hoped for. Let us be thankful. No more of that, please. No, no more of that in the in chat. Indeed. That we thus stand reunited is a gift. Let us not squander it, and see that we all return to Etheris. Aye. As soon as we've averted the final days. Good to see you again. Our heroic sacrifice paid off, I take it. Come, my friends. Let us carry on and finish it. Together. Come with us, Midian. Can you hear me? The voice is within, crying in pain, wailing in sorrow, hurting, hurting. End it. Silence it. Silence our song of oblivion.
The way is open. They can proceed. So it seems. Another planet to enter, huh? Of course. The Encore is finished, and I will not suffer myself to live again by Heidelin's magic. But more than that, the future you seek is not the past we loved. That is why we fought, and why I lost. But though you defeated me, my ideals are inviolate, invincible. Spare me your pity. I have no use for it. If you would do something for me, save our star. See this tale to a triumphant conclusion, and with elation in your hearts, bid the final curtain fall. Only then may it rise again, and a new tale begin, with new parts for all to play. Tell me, have you been to the ruins beneath the waters of the Bounty? Or the treasure islands beyond the frozen waters of Blind Frost in Offerd's North? The fabled golden cities of the New World? The sacred sites of the forgotten people of the South Sea Isles? And, Mis uh, and Mercidia. What about Mercidia, the southern continent? Do you know aught of its present state of affairs? I thought not. Even of your little Eorzea, you know precious little. The true identities of the Twelve, for instance. All of which is to say, expand your horizons, go forth and seek discovery. Some of the civilizations in the reflections will surprise you. He wants us to go to the other shards too. As the bearer of Azem's crystal, you may consider your duty to see at least that much. Yep, I agree. That's a this is a good way to tell the player there's more to come. I certainly did. <laughs> I pray we meet again. If not in this life, then perhaps another. Whensoever it should be, I trust it will be a most joyous reunion. For you, maybe. I want nothing to do with it. Oh, don't be that way.
I don't think I ever knew what to say to the man. In retrospect, it always felt like the wrong thing. But the path notwithstanding, he came to your aid in your moment of need. We are here, and we will not squander this chance he has given us. We will see this tale to a triumphant conclusion, and bid the final curtain fall. There it is! Endwalker! Oh, that giant ball of water reminds me of Shion! <laughs> ah, or at least the... Yeah, the, the planet. Are you ready, Prince? Then let us set forth for the reckoning. Having come this far, I know everyone's resolve is beyond doubt. So I will say only this. Within that dead sun swirls the emotions that Mateon has hoarded. The emotions of innumerable souls who strove for happiness but failed. As it was with the denizens of Ultima Thule that barred our way, it is not for us to rebuke and admonish. It was not by passing judgment on the tragic leg legacies of others that we arrived at this moment. Rather, it was by opening our hearts to their despair, by understanding and acknowledging their fates, while still refusing to share in them ourselves, to hold fast to hope, not in ignoring, but by choice. Ignorance by choice. Should you struggle to do so, I am here to help, as you have all helped me. Everyone's going home today, understood? I... The dead ends now accessible. Uh, Rooks, I just took one an hour ago. I'm okay, at least for... Um, I'm expecting this is going to be a dungeon, and then maybe they would be some sort of follow-up uh, where I would take, take a break. All right. So. I stand ever ready. Victory will be ours. Hmm. Let's, Let's go Alice and Estidian. Right I'm surprised this wouldn't have been an eight-man uh, eight dungeon, considering. So you are finally here, in this place between death and rebirth, where life knows no dawn. Come then. Follow me down into the darkest depths of despair.
Guess I was wrong about the uh, water burning off of Hydaelyn. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful blue star that fell to pestilence and rotted inside and out. The more its people clung to life, the more they suffered. Those, uh, they look similar to the, um, and I, I can't remember what they're called, but they're the, they're the fish people from, uh, that are up on the cliff of, um, Asm Step. Again. Uh, where they're holding their celebration. I can't remember what their race is called. But that's, that's who they remind me of. The way they flop around like that. Namazu, thank you. Ask such a question. Do you not see the plague and pestilence that consumes us? Ours is a world of rancid blood and rotting flesh, where death is the only remedy to suffering. There's no meaning to be found in such misery. But it was not always thus. Beneath the waves, we knew only peace and plenty. We wanted for naught, and yet craved more that our progeny might someday flourish as we never could. Eventually we ventured to the lands above, bearing flame and iron, toppling any who dared oppose our might. The world was ours for the taking. And I suppose something else to consider in all this. Though Meteon may have visited these worlds, it's possible they might have recovered after she had left. Or the Matea, rather. Until they curse not the illness, but their fellow corrupted. Also possible. Yes. 
Now, I wonder if the if the planet itself had been destroyed, and not just the civilization. Because it's also possible if the planet is still there, the planet might somehow have recovered, and perhaps built birthed yet another civilization, completely different. Kind of similar to what happened on Earth. After, uh, after, after that great uh, asteroid hit the planet and wiped out the dinosaurs, or at least the dinosaurs as we knew them back then. True, birds are basically the remnants. This world is not the boundless paradise we were promised. Our population quickly outstripped the habitable land. While seas we thought would shine forever, blue ran dry, spoiled in forging the tools of conquest. Cramped homes turned to squalor, and then came the sickness, our undoing, and the final blessing this star has to offer. We are no longer the fools we once were. Wheresoever life goes, death will follow. Indeed, existence is but the most painful path unto nothingness. And the wise embrace their obliteration wholeheartedly. Long enough. All right, so it looks like this is going to push things along. And my invulnerability didn't work.
Yeah, I saw it there. The, the, the wind pressing that hard looked to me like I was going to get blown into it. But apparently that didn't happen. And then, of course, Graha going down didn't help. So, just for my own sake, I'm gonna go like that. Let's try this again. Those who lived and festered. Those who died and decayed. I get it now. It's more like uh, it's more like mega flares. Overwriting my uh, my dot by doing that. First boss down. Yeah, no, I agree. That's a good change that was made uh, for uh, for tanks. And the very last of them wished they had never been born at all. In a faraway place, a brilliant star eradicated disease. Before destroying the self-same lives it had saved. No. 
Allow me. This will hurt. Yeah, no, definitely, I agree. Allow me. Its people sought ever greater freedoms, no matter the cost. That otherworldly beings should first grace us with their presence is a sign. Indeed, they understand that we, the global community, are possessed of the wisdom and compassion needed to guide this star back to the path of righteousness. Yet the freedom fighters dare to undermine us, inviting chaos to disrupt the order we labored so hard to build. They have forgotten the history of this star and its once myriad nations, the wars waged, the countless lives lost. They must be brought to heal, the world united under a single standard, no matter the cost. Be the first time I've heard of uh, heard of that idea. I have you now. They try to buy peace with fire and steel. me. I have you now. You underestimate me. You're 
Kind of look like actually a uh, little bit of the uh, enemies that you encounter in Final Fantasy 13. Now that I think about it. We constructed the Peacekeeper, the pinnacle of engineering and technology. This mighty war machine was designed to rid us of the Freedom Fighters, as well as any other potential threats to the peace we have long pined for. Its artificial intelligence ensures that this singular function is carried out with cold and calculating precision. Indeed, the 10,000 Peacekeeper units we created have now routed every threat to peace, including us. All that remains is to stand and fight. Was that attack called No Future? Allow me. What am I supposed to do if they're running towards me like that? Okay, yeah, no future. That is... That's actually... Uh, that reminds me of an attack uh, of a similar name uh, in Saga Frontier. So it seems like this boss is more about just dancing than anything else.
Allow me. Down it goes. And when one asked, what is the point? There were none left to answer. Not saying anything further. Father still existed a star without strife. Where none remembered life's trials, or its joys. Underestimate me! Well, there's a beautiful garden up here, but down there... The world is just broken. A curious traveler visited our star. A bird which proffered these questions. What meaning does life hold? For what do you strive? I can find no satisfactory answers. Only bittersweet memories of an age long past. There was a time when we were lesser. And in our nescience uh, sought purpose. Struggled to justify life's worth. That was, of course, before we achieved perfection. Now, condemned to our paradise, we understand the fatuity, uh, the fatuity of existence. Like the fledglings we once were, the poor bird could not accept the truth. It asked us again and again, hoping perhaps our answer might change. Got 
what its people had gained from ease, they lost to apathy. This area is taking a while. Hopefully that's the boss up there though. Time when we yearned to explore the heavens, found purpose in the hope of unveiling life's mysteries. A dream shattered when we reached enlightenment and found it empty. There was a time when we believed in our legacy, thought ourselves marking a worthy path our access successors might follow. Efforts rendered futile when we discovered the keys to paradise and immortality. As individuals, we struggled to know what was right. Yet in today's perfect unity, there is not left to question. We are infinity constricted by the finite. But no more. Rala shall grant us the mercy of annihilation. Yeah, they kind of do have that look, don't they? So they created the kindest, most gentle of beasts.
its steps were light. And its gift was as painless as it was beautiful. Bathed in its golden glow, they all slept happily ever after. Allow me! Allow me! Allow me. Yeah. Ten percent. Down it goes. Let's see what's inside the treasure coffer. Nothing from this class. Alright. Uh, so I'm expecting we're probably going to get a sequence of cutscenes here as well as uh, something else after that. 
So what I want to do is I want to take a quick three to five minute break here, and then we're going to continue on to the finale of the expansion. So please stand by. I will be right back. <laughs> 